So, let us look at the type 1 uh, problems of the teams and challenges and what are their uh, solutions. Generally type 1 problem which are related to team building happen in the forming and storming stage of the team function. Forming phase is when you actually constitute the teams based on some objective data like competency, temperament, uh, past performance, experience etc. And storming stage is when group or team starts working towards finalizing the final norms and uh, objectives. So, storming phase is when there are, uh, there are extensive debates about what to pursue and how to pursue. In this type of problems, uh, the focus of intervention is generally goal and role clari clarification related to task structure and looking at the group composition. There are some simple interventions like expectation setting, team objective setting, performance and reward mechanism. These are simple but very important interventions. Generally a team for a very specific objective must start working with a clear team charter and generally a team charter has the expectations from each other. That team objectives and what how the reward and recognition will be shared in, within the team. These are the simple things, but if we overlook these things that may create problem in future. Then there are some more complex uh, interventions like uh, team role analysis. So, these are the nine roles being identified by Belbin. Generally people have liking for some or other role what we have found is that for any team to be successful and to complete its task, there has to be shaper, completer and implementer. So, action oriented role, people with the action oriented role sometimes become mostly become more effective leaders. People oriented roles, people having the preference for people oriented roles generally become good collegial team members and people who have preference for the cerebral roles generally develop as experts and team members rely on some specific expert advice from them. However, the most successful managers are those who can embrace larger number of roles in their uh, general working. Mostly the leaders team leaders have to have action oriented role more prominent in their personality. So, team role analysis, uh, Belbin is one framework, but there are many other frameworks uh, looking at the different typology of the roles essentially with the similar philosophy. Now, we look at another method called role negotiation. Role negotiation is also a method of OD intervention particularly suitable for the team situation. To understand the role negotiation as an OD intervention, we must understand that what is the difference between role and the job. We all get job offers, but we what we have to do in the organization, what we have to accomplish in the organization, what we have to uh, deliver in the organization are the roles. So, what is the difference between job and role? Job is related to your individual responsibilities, but role is always in context of in relation to others. So, role always includes informal understandings, agreements, <coughs> expectation and arrangements with others along with formal job. So, the relational component, the psychological component both when combined with job generally becomes role. Role negotiation there are prerequisites for this techniques. Feel or report the emotions, but do not act on that. Probing on emotion is not part of this process. So, when we are using role negotiation as an OD intervention in a team, 
we need not to work on the emotions of the people we may acknowledge those but we have to keep it aside for the further discussion openness honesty and interest these are very essential for this intervention to be successful all those who are involved in this intervention have to have these three characteristics expectations and demands to be written down and clearly understood by both sender and receiver as the name suggests there is a component of negotiation in this intervention for any negotiation to uh, to fructify to be followed all the terms and condition must be written down and must be understood in a similar way by both the parties requested or demanded must be accompanied by a willingness to give up something in exchange as it happens in the negotiation both parties will request or demand something for each other we need to be willing to give or compromise on something to get something in this uh, situation commit and invest efforts to modify behavior for the desired change we may agree to change some behavior we may agree to uh, do something which we were not doing or stop doing something which we were doing but that ultimately rest on my commitment and effort to actually demonstrate that in the behavior so i may agree it but that agreement must be translated into action and for any cognition to get transferred into action requires additional energy and for that investment we should be willing while threats and pressures are neither illegitimate nor excluded from the negotiation process in the negotiation many a time pressure and threats are used however positive intentions and positive incentives yield greater result in most cases if in the role negotiation process parties and the people involved think about win win solutions the possibility of the final solution to be sustainable happens to be very high in comparison to those situation where primarily threats or pressures are being used as technique and instead of win win orientation the negotiation is carried out with a win lose uh, or lose lose uh, kind of uh, position now look at the steps in od intervention we must understand that lot of process work is involved we have already discussed what is the process work process work mean my behavior is the outcome of a process means there are certain under underlying values beliefs morals emotions and assumptions and the dynamic of all these factors which result in my behavior so if i have to change my behavior i need to work on certain emotions assumptions morals values etc so even uh, one word even word and sentences play a critical role the choice of word and the sentences play a critical role in arriving at the common understanding and reaching to the desired outcome so that's why we need to be very conscious of what are the steps involved so first step is about discussion within your group so suppose there are two groups involved we can discuss the influence and power you believe others to have how will uh, you uh, you believe yourself to have and others believe you to have what is the influence and power and how is manifested in your work relations with others if there are two groups involved in this negotiation they can have a group discussion within the group to understand what are the influence and power we have what are the influence and power other group has and what other group thinks that influence and power we have so in essentially they are making three list if this process is going on in a team where uh, ev- everyone is each member has to negotiate his or her role with everyone else they need to think about these things power and influence 
in context to their role so if there is an executive team if there is a team which is uh, where members are responsible for different tasks and if there is a need for negoti role negotiation if it is going on similar question people have to ask team members have to ask about in the context of their role then each of you should now think and take some notes if necessary about the way work is conducted between yourself and others in the group this should be done individually and quietly with the following question in mind what things would you change if you could what would you keep the same and who and what would have to change in order to improve things keep in mind and focus upon those things that might be changed to improve your own effectiveness so individually i need to think what in this group should start happening or stop happening what is the change you wish then what would you keep the same what are the good things what are the what are the practices we must follow in the group or what what in the team and then who and what would have to change in order to improve things my understanding about what some other specific group members should start or stop doing so i make that list each group member makes that list now use one of the issue diagnostic forms generally issue diagnostic forms have these questions if you were to do following things more or better it would help me to increase my own effectiveness so in a way i am extending my contract to the other group member by saying that if you were to do following things it will make me more effective in my role if you were to do the following things less or were to stop doing things it would help me to increase my own effectiveness and following things which you have been doing help to increase my effectiveness and i hope you will continue to do that so in a group situation first i look at what are my Uh, power and influence second i look at what are the interactions what is the group dynamics what is the team work what is the team functioning how is the team is functioning and what it should be how it should change that will make me more effective and after that i identify the specific team member with this request uh, generally captured in the issue diagnosis form where i specifically mention you please start or stop doing these things which will make me effective and continue to do those those things which will keep me effective after this exchange a list within your group such that you now have each of the list pertaining to your own work behavior so if there are six group if, if there are six team members all six team members will make these three list they exchange these <coughs> list with each other so i get the perception and the offer for the contract from all other team members and i extend my offer and contract and request to all other team members based on all the data which is coming from the different team members and what i have thought through i make a summary list form which includes what i am expected to do what are the request i have received from others and what are the request others are making to me share your summary list with each other in the group by writing it upon the flip chart and posting it so based on these request and contact everyone says okay i am willing to do these 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 things and i am willing to continue these 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 things so without any conflict people in the first round of agreement happens because many things people wish to do many group member most of the time team members want to be effective for their personal cause as well as for the cause of the team they are not able to see their own behavior and in order to uh, to be them better just some these kind of request and offers for the contract itself are sufficient to make them aware and realize what are the changes required 
Now question each of the other group members about items on the list by asking why, what and how. If you do not agree with some contract or if you find some request to be strange, you ask, you probe further. Do not offer a rebuttal to their replies. You are allowed to ask clarification question only, not to make a statement. Then comes the stage step 8, where select one or more behavior items. So, after making the master list, having a discussion, having a probing, not a discussion. And after the uh, probing and understanding more about the request of the people, select one or more behavior item from the list that you would particularly like to see some change in on the part of another person. Now, select one or more item that you feel you may be able to change in the direction others desire. The most negotiable items are those where there is a combination of high desire for change on the part of the initiator and willingness to negotiate on the part of the person whose behavior is the target of change attempts. So, focus upon these items. Ninth step is engage in the negotiation process by making offers in the form if you do x I will do y. So, you see most of these agreements about the change and most of these understanding about the required changes are being tackled before the negotiation actually starts. Just based on the writing and giving and presenting the objecto authentic data, we lot of problems and challenges can be addressed. If still there is a scope for the negotiation, in the step 9 that negotiation happens, where different group members have to negotiate about what they expect more from the other person, if they are communicated any particular type of change to be introduced in their behavior. Negotiation ends when all parties are satisfied with both what was given up and what was received. Write the agreement down as specifically as possible using the final agreement and continue to negotiate on the other items on the list. Publish the result of the contracting cycle by circulating them among the members of the group. So, we need to circulate these contract with the other group members. So, if two group mem if there is a team of the six and two group members reach to some negotiation, that negotiation and that agreement must be circulated to all other team members as well. This is the process of role negotiation technique. There are types of intervention related to the task structure. Basically, when we look at the task structure, what we are looking at? We are looking at how the team members are coordinating with each other and how their behavior is regulated. So, how much autonomy they have and how much coordination uh, and what type of coordination is required. To understand the importance of coordination and undefine the role of that in team functioning, uh, many time uh, outdoor activities are very useful. Because outdoor in outdoor activities uh, like the one presented in the slide are not exactly related to the job, but they have a lot of parallels with the job and they create a safe situation to self reflect on their behavior. Means how do they exchange communication, how do they exchange information, how do they coordinate, who takes leadership role, who takes followers role, who takes responsibility, who avoids responsibility, many many such things come out in a very safe environment in the outdoor activity. So, to understand the importance of coordination and my general disposition about the coordination, uh, outdoor activities are very useful. Group composition is the third aspect of uh, team, team OD intervention. That is about complementarity of the knowledge, skill and attitude. If that complementarity is not maintained, teams generally remain uh, suboptimal performing teams. The competency means skill, knowledge and attitude. So, complementarity also has to be in all three aspects. 
like there has to be complementary about the knowledge and skill but there is a complementary required in the attitude as well that's where the personality test learning style predominant motivators these kind of uh, factors become important so you might have uh, might be familiar to uh, some of these uh, factors on which we distinguish the personality and work behavior for example need for motivation may be arising out of need for achievement need for power and need for affiliation different people will have different levels of needs and that might be motivating them we need to understand in a team who is motivated by what most often and accordingly if we can assign the roles and if we can accommodate their motivation that helps a lot in achieving the coordination then many of you must be aware of the mbti profile there are thinking and feeling continuum there are introversion and extroversion orientation there is a judgment and perceiving orientation and sensing and intuitive way of looking at things different people have different type of mbti profile to want to coordinate better it is very helpful for the team members to understand each other's profile similarly there are different ways people learn if you remember the core learning cycle it involves how do we collect information and how do we use that information we collect information through concrete experience and abstract conceptualization and we transform information through active experimentation and reflection and observation as the combination of how people collect information and how people transform the information learning styles emerge so there are different types of learning styles which are called converger diverger accommodator and assimilator as per the core learning style model now we need to know that different people within the same team may have different type of learning style so while knowing about the different types of motivation or psychological profile or learning style we achieve two things number 1 we start appreciating the individual difference in spite of all the technical complementarity available and ensuring that in a team there might be difference because of these temperaments so when we know about the difference when we know about each other temperament and these disposition we become appreciative of each other and at the same time when i become aware of my temperament i try to accommodate others and i try to change my disposition to some extent there are certain things which cannot be changed drastically but there are there is a possibility of uh, making some modifications in these dispositions if that modification is not possible beyond the limit at least a synergistic approach can be adopted where if i know that i am not very good at planning i can delegate that and that to other team member and trust that team member uh, for what he uh, for his uh, her planning capabilities so by generating more appreciation and creating the synergy based on this knowledge the coordination of the teams can be better so this this is also one of the type od intervention then we come to the type 2 or intervention which are related to the team performance in the team performance two prominent components are team functioning and performance norms team functioning means the specific task whether team is able to perform or not when teams are not able to perform the specific task they are assigned there might be problem about their ability to manage project making decisions solving problems or even design thinking if team has a task of innovation we know that there are six steps of problem solving and interventions can be around 
linear process of problem solving. Interventions can also be done on group decision making processes. How to effectively use the standard agenda, brainstorming, nominal group technique, consensus, voting and ranking as method of making decisions. These are particularly useful when team is not effective in uh, decision making. Then there are uh, uh, interventions about lateral thinking. Lateral thinking is thinking beyond obvious. Lateral thinking is thinking beyond the linear and sequential way of thinking. So, lateral thinking and six hats uh, of proposed by De Bono, popularized by him are, are also very important code intervention to make the teams practice more creative thinking and lateral thinking and come to the innovative solution. Project management also is a very important team competence. Project management is a developed science in itself. Generally, the project management training is given in combination of the classroom training and the practical assignment. You might remember Six Sigma training. Six Sigma training cannot happen just in the classroom. In the classroom, you understand the concept, you have to come back to the workplace and do that project, whether it is a green belt project or black belt project and you are encouraged to use all the statistical techniques and other techniques and decision making techniques which are taught as a Six Sigma training to be used in that project. Similarly, a project management training also involves embedded learning which is the combination of classroom training, coaching, action learning projects etc. Nowadays, design thinking is identified as very important competency. There is a huge pressure on organizations to be more innovative and it is increasingly realized and recognized that innovation is not the job of a specialized department responsible for R&D innovation. In a business organization, innovation is essential and innovative thinking is essential for all the levels of employees. For that, we have a process called design thinking. It was more popular amongst the designers earlier, but in the field of management also, design thinking is emerging as a very important and recognized, well recognized OD intervention. Design thinking is different from a typical innovative project because it starts not from the problem, but empathizing and closely observing the end customer. So, empathy and prototyping are the very specially used and a very specific way it is used in the design thinking. We have few examples of the design thinking like Shimono's uh, innovation of the coasting bike or uh, electric uh, toothbrush or this water container. Uh, transferable water container used in Africa. These are some of the examples when uh, of the design thinking output. So, design thinking has also become a very important uh, team intervention for enhancing the team functioning. Last but not the least, in the team, in the team performance intervention are performance norms. Performance norms are about how people approach their work and interact with each other in a team. The norms may be related to trust, norms may be related to how people interact with each other. To understand how, what are the norms, prevailing norms of a team, observation is a very good method. When a trained consultant just observe the team functioning, it brings out, uh, it clarifies the performance norms of the team. Then if we need, there is a very famous uh, activity called trust fall used in a team uh, in a team situation where uh, the focus is on making people ready to trust on the team members and respecting the others trust uh, by the team members 360 degree appraisal is also a very important method of developing the performance norms disk profiling which looks at the dominance influence compliance and steady, steadiness the task orientation, people orientation, outgoing and deserved, these kind of dispositions. So, disk profiling is again a prominent method of intervention to uh, 
develop better performance norms in a team. What sustains the many time the questions are raised, how the interventions which generally give immediate boost up of energy and insights, how the impact of those interventions can be sustained. So, personal management interview is recommended as the follow up intervention that arrest the potential fade out effects of off site team building. There is extensive research done by boss and his colleagues, they suggest that personal management interview is effective in sustaining the long term effects of off site team building. Generally through the PMI a team leader negotiates the roles with each team member to resolve problems and increase the personal accountability. After the intervention, uh, based on the agreements about the change in behavior, a personal interview, uh, pers a personal management in uh, interview protocol is set up and using that protocol, leaders take uh, regular meetings to make people remind and take the report how they are how they are able to follow the change behaviors or are they following the new norms. So, this is found to be effective way to sustain the impact of these team intervention. Then there is a type 3 problem where team is not able to look at its impact and its association with the larger organization. If that is the case, focus of the intervention happens to be organizational objectives and systems perspective. What do we do? We make this team involved in the strategic planning or we make this team aware of the strategic plan of the organization. We ask the team to do the stakeholder mapping and to check what is the expectations of the different stakeholders and to trace how the expectations of the different stakeholders have changed over the years or recently. These are the ways to make teams connecting back to the organizational agenda. If team, if there are there are any intergroup collaboration required that is also that also helps in bringing back team to the mainstream of the organization. The teams might be drifted because of their intergroup or inter team conflict with other teams. In that situation we need to have intergroup collaboration, intergroup collaboration and intergroup role negotiation is similar to the role negotiation uh, technique we, which we discussed. Uh, in the role negotiation between the two groups, the, the three list means what is uh, my expectation about my power and influence or the group's power and influence, what is the group uh, uh, the power and influence of other group and what other group might be thinking about power and influence we have. And similarly, what are the changes required by other group and what are the changes I can do? All these discussions are being carried out in the inter group or inter team interventions. So, these are the this is the dis, this is the discussion about the team interventions about type 1, type 2, and type 3 problem. Now, if we look at the team building activities and the problems we started this session. And now we can look at what are the appropriate interventions required in these situations. Members in a consulting do not follow the timelines for the communication, interrupt each other during the meeting and do not follow the follow through the team decision. What is the appropriate intervention here? First, for the performance norms, what is the most common intervention? Observation first step is observation because observation gives us hard data, a clear data how people are behaving and that is the starting point for the intervention and connecting that behavior with the outcome. Members of executive committee of the manufacturing plan giving the separate sometimes contact interaction, having the ego tussle, what is the appropriate intervention? Role negotiation. Role negotiation because people are having egos and want to uh, exercise their authority. All our heads are at the equal level of the hierarchy. So, no one is going to 
uh, accept others authority and that is the cause of they giving instructions. In that situation there has to be a proper boundary management and the role clarity and that requires a role negotiation. Team with excellent track record, passionate leader, committed members is starting to show the sign of derailment is which problem type 1, type 2 or type 3 problem? Generally time 3 problem team is not able to see its connection and it is not able to look at the ex what is expected from them in the change time. Team getting outcome of their activities which nobody likes or proud of is a generally the case of leadership. Team might be aware that I am what we are doing is not wonderful, team might be not, not be happy about their outcome, but still they are not able to chart out the new path because that requires leadership. Without leadership, team efforts cannot be directed to one specific direction. Now is the time for the virtual teams. You might have worked or you will be working in the teams which are widely dispersed, maybe in different uh, parts of the world and mostly interacting using IT. Whether these OD interventions are relevant for the virtual teams that is a natural question. What is found in the research and these research studies are again quoted in your textbook of early in Cummins. They say that communication technologies are augmented to include the goal setting process, team functioning and team performance. Dialogue intervention intended to improve the shared mental models were also found to be effective in face to face team as well as the video conferencing teams. The video conference team when have a dialogue about the shared to build the shared mental model, the con video conferencing also found to be equally effective. Virtual and geographically dispersed teams can also take advantage of the variety of asynchronous facilities, facilitation tools such as wikis, shared portals or the group fairs. And because of these asynchronous facilitation tools, virtual teams can be effective. Interpersonal closeness between members of a virtual team is created when one member proactively help another members, another member to solve a problem or address a concern. This is also a research finding. Another research finding suggests that closeness is maintained by frequent, short but content oriented message, not the process oriented message. When task specific content oriented messages are exchange more frequently that helps the virtual team to be more effective. Team performance is enhanced by initial face to face team building meetings. When before going for the virtual setting when there is a face to face meeting it, it is found that, that uh, this process this practice makes the virtual team also more effective. So, these are the ways of looking to enhance the functioning of the virtual teams, many of the findings, many of the scientific principles which are relevant in face to face meetings, uh, face to face teams uh, which are working at the same location apply to the virtual teams as well.